Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rourke with Allison Thompson of The Money Farm. And we've seen a lot of green on the board so far this morning, with the exception of a few of the wheat contracts. And Allison, let's start off talking at least about corn and soybeans separately. Um, it looks like what we've held support areas and we're seeing some technical buying or is this all about demand? Yeah, you know, honestly, it's a little bit of both. We went down and tested support levels. And for corn, it's definitely that $4 area that definitely sparks demand. We've seen that happen before. And thankfully, we're seeing follow through that that area is getting some demand here as well. And we got another export sale this morning, which is great to see and is definitely keeping the market supported. So as long as we continue to see some demand here pop up, it definitely should help. But it seems like we've kind of are establishing at least some kind of a bottoming action or finding really good support along that $4 area. So now we just need to see markets move up to the upside. And the only way really to do that, I feel right now, is through more demand. Um, harvest is obviously chugging along here in the U.S. Guys are wrapping up, to be honest with you, on some of this corn. Um, you know, we've had a really good stretch here for harvest. Um, and it's been dry. I mean, when dry corn, you can roll pretty quick here during the day. You're not necessarily having to stop and, and dry and things like that. So it is it is moving along. And I've heard really good corn yields out there. So that might be another thing that might be starting to pressure the market if we see demand start to falter here. Yeah, it seems like a bit of a back and forth tug of war there. Kind of the same is true in the soybeans as well. Um, obviously, we're correcting now, but we have had some real uh, Brazil rains and we have tariff talk. And so that kind of keeps the lid on the market. But do you feel like demand's picking up enough in that market to help us chew through this big carryout or not? You know, we are hitting that peak export window here for the U.S., but we haven't seen the big sales. We've actually seen more in corn. So hopefully we see soybeans come in here and get some follow through. And I think that's why we're still hanging out below this $10 area, um, especially on the front month. But interestingly, though, um, you know, when you're talking about demand, we've actually seen some basis um, improvement um, around the area. And we've also um, seen some bull spreading happen. And given the current fundamental outlook, um, for soybeans and corn for that matter, it's surprising that we're seeing this type of bull spreading. We're seeing more premium come into the front months versus the deferred. So the market wants it now. So there's clearly some demand happening here, whether that's domestic or it's being for export. You know, I think at this point, we're all kind of guessing on which one it is. And maybe it is more domestic that we're, you know, getting it through harvest and these end users really want the grain as well. But it'd be certainly helpful if we could get some more export business coming through on a daily basis, like we have the corn, um, especially, like I said, we're getting into that peak export window. But some of that could be just delayed because we are watching South America's weather. And they are getting beneficial rains right now, which obviously did help their planting progress. Um, this past week, they reported at 18%, which is a decent jump from last week with more rain on the way. So I think that they'll get their crop established, but I don't think it's going to completely alleviate their drought conditions at this point. They're going to need timely rains here going forward to establish the crop and get it off to a good start. So from that perspective, I still think that there are opportunities for a weather market here in, in the beans and maybe in the corn, just based on South America's weather, um, especially over the next couple of months. You know, they have a long window for soybean planting uh, between now and honestly December. So we could see it come back into play. And obviously that has an impact on corn as well. Yeah, no doubt. Of course, we had about a dollar correction from the highs in the soybeans. Like you said, we bounced off support, but $10 is going to be pretty stiff resistance. Um, do you think, I mean, what would it take for us to get above that? Just more demand from China? I mean, talk a little bit about their stimulus and if you think it's actually helping the market. Yeah, you know, the stimulus packages that China has been coming out with have been pretty consistent. Over the last three weeks, we've seen them come out with some type of a stimulus announcement three times. So they're really trying to boost their economy. And they're experiencing something different than we are. We're obviously dealing with inflation here in the U.S., where we're seeing a lot of consumer spending, whereas China is actually seeing deflation. Their consumers are not spending. So they're trying to pump some money into their economy and get people to spend. And 
there's a lot of speculation on how that could actually affect our grains, you know, how that's going to be impacted on no one. But ultimately, when you're trying to spark spending, it should increase demand. So hopefully, you know, if one of these things actually do take off, um, I think that could be something else that would help us get past that $10 mark. And we actually saw a decent rally when China announced their first round of stimulus a few weeks ago. That really helped out beans. But since then, every weekend that they've come out with something, it's really failed to spark anything in beans. And I think that's because we haven't necessarily seen the exports come through. So if we could actually see some big Chinese sales here, um, I think that would definitely help us out. So I think their economy is something definitely to be watching here. Yeah. And it sounds like China has not been willing to buy like past January, just because of all this talk about tariffs, if we get Trump in as president. Yes, it's it's definitely political. And um, obviously, you're, you're trading something and speculating on something that we don't know um, is even going to happen. Of course, talk is definitely there, but it's really an unknown at this point, you know, and I have a hard time trading that because, uh, you know, we don't know any of those answers yet. So it's hard to speculate on that side. But we are in a futures market and futures are always looking forward. So if something like that were to happen, they are going to try and front run it. And that could be exactly what's going on here. Yeah. So the wheat market looks like it certainly wants to try to follow corn and soybeans here. Why is it being held back? Is this a weather play or not? Well, I think it is, um, especially when you're looking at the global side of it. Um, we've really gotten good support because of production issues globally, but we've seen some relief um, to some of the dry areas, uh, particularly in the Black Sea. They've gotten some relief rains. We're also seeing some relief rains here in the U.S. as well. So we did get some decent progress this week, a little bit slower than I think the trade was expecting here. And that might give us some support here um, going forward following just yesterday's planting progress report. But ultimately, weather does remain the major thing here that they're watching. So any improvements definitely going to put us back to support levels. Um, and if we see anything worsening, hopefully that will see some breaks to the upside. And Russia said they were going to put a floor on their price, but it really hasn't meant much, has it? No, they've been coming out with uh, different announcements too, which does spark some concern on the global scale. I, I do admit that, you know, they're kind of like China in a way, you don't really know what's truth or what's actually happening, but rumors do spark the trade. So we've had a few different things. They increased their export tax 41%, which sounded huge, but ended up to not be that much on a buying basis. Um, and then on top of that, we heard rumors that they're putting in a, a, a min, uh, minimum price or 250. Um, so, but we haven't really seen any follow through for that yet either, but those are things that are definitely telling us that they're trying to reduce their exports. Um, if they are true, obviously maybe they're dealing with lower supplies. Maybe they exported too much. Um, maybe production isn't there. Maybe it's lower than what current estimates are. You know, the USDA has been moving them lower. A lot of private analysts have been moving them lower. And interestingly, we're starting to hear estimates for 2025 um, out of Russia actually coming in quite a bit lower, um, anywhere between 80 to 85 million metric tons, which is kind of different, a lot different than last year. Last year, this time we were looking at 24 being 90 plus million metric tons. And now we're looking at estimates five to 10 million metric tons below that. Um, so I think there are definitely issues there. But right now we're kind of throwing darts at the wall trying to figure out what which, which it is. Is it supplies? Is it production? But ultimately, if they are trying to reduce their exports, um, it does put a lot more pressure on other areas. Um, and so the Southern Hemisphere is obviously the key point right now. They're in their growing season. So, you know, and obviously they're not without issues and with issues in the Northern Hemisphere this past year too. Um, it definitely puts a lot more pressure pressure on there on production here moving forward. Yeah, and they're hard to compete with on a price basis. Um, not that our demand is totally bad, but do you think that the demand is going to pick up through bidding for better quality, for better protein levels? Yeah, and actually we've seen that with our spring wheat um, here as well. Um, we've seen some basis improvement, but we've also seen some premiums coming into um, the spring wheat market as well, especially at mills for end users. Um, we've seen some decent protein premiums come in. So if it's starting at the mills, hopefully it'll start working its way down where guys are going to be seeking some of that quality wheat. Um, and, and as you know, we didn't have a phenomenal crop up here. We obviously they got rains at the wrong time, which did hurt our quality. But hopefully, guys who have some decent quality out there, um, they'll be able to take advantage of that here moving forward. So I think there will be some demand coming down the pipeline here for some quality wheat. 
All right. What about the cattle market? Um, you know, we've had basically um, a pretty strong fundamental tone to the market here. Study to better cash, higher box beef values. We struggled yesterday. We're up into resistance. Can we take out those levels? Is that as easy as we can make this? Well, I, I don't think necessarily, I think the news is supportive and that's why we're back up to resistance levels, but I think the market wants more. We want something new um, to really push us beyond those levels. So I think we're we're either looking for some kind of demand or something else here to really push higher. And I think the stock market's also something that we should be watching when we're talking livestock as well. Um, they've kind of set back here, but ultimately they've remained uh, resilient here through the month of October. And I think that might be something that's giving some of the strength to the livestock sector. No doubt. All right. Thanks so much. Allison Thompson with The Money Farm. That is Markets Now.